Hello and welcome to St. Luke's Church. It's a delight to reflect on God's Word with you together uh, on this, the day of Epiphany. Uh, it's a holy day we commonly overlook, but uh, a little more attention than usual this year and uh, a lot of blessing in this study. This has been a season of gifts. Gifts galore at Christmas time. And we wind that down now uh, at Epiphany, Epiphany which ends the Christmas season. Uh, the crash is a little more complete now. We have the Christ child and the shepherds, but we have the Magi now offering their gifts to Christ. Epiphany is a day, a day when we remember the Magi's appearance. It also begins a whole season and a theme, a theme of Christ for the nations. But today, I want us to consider gifts. We like gifts. Gifts are a lot of fun. I like getting gifts. I don't know anybody who doesn't. And it's interesting. I'll tell everybody I don't need anything, and I don't. When I get a gift, ooh, that's fun. It's nice to know somebody cared. Sometimes it's just nice to get stuff. It's nice to give gifts. Uh, maybe you've seen a lot of these around. My wife and I have taken to making these gifts. She makes these lovely boxes and they get prettier every year. She folds the paper and I make the candy pretzels that we put inside and uh, it's fun just to give them away. There might be just a few left at the church here. I put them there by the offering boxes and you can pick one up when you take your offering box. It's fun. It's a joy to be able to give. It's a joy to let people know that you care. And yes, it's true. Gifts have gotten out of control in our society. But that's a message for another time. Now, it's commonly said that the uh, the tradition of giving gifts at Christmas began with the Magi from Matthew 2 verse 11. On entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We remember them giving the gifts, not simply giving the gifts, but bowing down before the Christ child, humbling themselves, and there giving gold, gold a gift for kings, for royalty, for Christ was king. Incense, a gift for a priest. We light incense and the smoke, the sweet smoke ascends to heaven. And this is, is really a symbol of, of the prayers of God's people, of the prayers of a priest of God. And Jesus came to be our high priest and the gift of myrrh. And myrrh is a spice used in burial, reminding us from the very beginning that Christ came to die for the sins of the world and to be our sacrifice. They gave gifts to the Christ child, and so should we. And what gifts shall we give? That's actually not a very difficult question. What shall we give to Christ? to show kindness to others, to support Christ's church, to love in Christ's name. We think of the uh, parable of the sheep and the goats, and we remember the king, uh, the, the judge, a symbol, of course, of God, saying that as you have done to the least of these, my people, so you have done to me, visiting the prisoner, feeding and clothing the poor, we need to consider very seriously the gifts we give, not simply in this season, but in an ongoing way, and how we support church and charity. We give gifts to the Christ child, but I contend that there's even a more important gift that we need to remember, that we dare not forget, especially in this season of gifts. And that is not the gifts to the Christ child, but even more important, the gift of the Christ child. Jesus came to dwell among us. He truly became one of us. And so he lived with us, suffered and died, rose in victory and gave us eternal life. And having won that victory, he looks to each one of us and he says, 
It's my gift to you. Receive it, the gift of life. And only by that gift of life can you overcome sin. Only by that gift of my life, which I give, can you overcome death. Take the gift, please take it. And in the season and spirit of epiphany, to pass it on, Christ for all the nations, Christ for all the world. Can we humbly receive the gift of Christ? You know, at gift time, there are gift games we play. I get somebody a gift and it costs so much. And they get me a gift and it costs about that much. And if those gifts don't measure up about evenly, ooh, somebody becomes very uncomfortable because then I might owe them. I don't want that to happen, do I? And what we're doing is not really so much giving gifts. It's, it almost becomes something of a mutual indulgence, or at least in one respect. No, a gift, a true gift, is something that is freely given, not necessarily deserved, nor earned. And so it is that Christ has given us himself. Familiar words from Ephesians, for by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. It was humbling to receive a gift. It's humbling to receive the Christ child, to say, God, I don't deserve your son. I might work hard or even try to do good things and show myself worthy, but that's a silly charade, for none of us are worthy of Jesus. And yet he says, come and receive me as your greatest gift. Come and receive life. That's the first and the most important gift. I pray that as we wind down this season of gifts, you may cherish above all that one wonderful gift, the Christ. And let us pray. Jesus, thanks that you came the whole way to earth to live and dwell among us, how you sacrificed and how you suffered and how you set us free in your glorious resurrection. Help us to humbly receive you and receiving you, let us gladly pass on that gift to a world who so needs to know you. Bless us on this day and in this season of epiphany and all for your glory. Amen.